The Babadook is, a, is an Australian-Canadian intense psychological horror film written and directed by Jennifer Kane in her directorial debut in which a woman and her son are tormented by an evil entity known as the Babadook. Um, heading into this, watching this movie beforehand, um, I had seen a bunch of praise towards it by Chris Stuckman and Rotten Tomatoes has it, gave it a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was a 90 on Metacritic. So going into this film, I was interested and I'm really a guy who watches horror films. I'm not really interested in that much. But heading into this film, I was expecting to see something great in it, and I can see it, see why a lot of people love it. Love it because it's well directed, it's well acted, the cinematography is great, the acting is great, except for one, which I'll get to in a moment. And the overall story was was intense, and the atmosphere was very creepy and moody and whatnot. And I really thought this movie was great. Now, going into what I'm saying is the bad part is the kid. I really did not like the kid. Like, I kept thinking, like, oh my god, can this kid please just be quiet? Like, I wanted the kid to just shut up. Because he just wouldn't stop doing these crazy things. Like, he was being so annoying. And so, uh, so self-entitled as I looked at it. And, like, I just wanted that kid to be quiet. But it never happened, and... But, and like, I know he got better in the movie uh, trying to protect his mother from the Babadook, but I just couldn't stand the kid so much. Like, he just had a very annoying 20 minutes, and it was just so bad. Like, I'm not saying the kid was a bad actor, but I just couldn't handle dealing with, with that kid a lot. But, and there's one thing I really was interested in, like, the Babadook, like, I didn't really care about seeing it or not. Like, I heard that was a lot of criticism I got, like, saying we didn't see the monster and whatnot, even though the trailers indicated, from what I heard, said this is a creature feature, not an intense psychological thriller. But here's what I was thinking, like, wait, how about you just made it up? Like, wh why doesn't the mother, like, make it up? Like, she's dealing with grief and depression, like, that's the basis of the movie, so why not have the mother make it up? Like she like she read the story to her son and then was so haunted haunted by it that she somehow made it real to her. And because like how in the movie she would later say she wished she could just bash her son's head in. Who it, like I thought that was gruesome. And how she wished her son was normal like everyone else. And how she might hate her son because of what happened to her husband. Like, I was thinking, like, wait, why not just make the Baba Duke up? Like, maybe it wasn't real. Like, maybe the wife, the mother made it up because she wanted to, she wanted a defense mechanism and give herself an excuse why she wants to get rid of her son so much since she hates him because he won't act like a normal kid. He instead acts like a crazy person. And it's in her mind, responsible for her for her lover's death. Like, wouldn't that have been a more plot-twisting thriller? Like, like showing that this woman has messed up issues. Like, she basically hated everything. In fact, the question the son asked when he shoved her was saying, do you want to die? Like, that made me think, wait. In fact, it does kind of sound like she does want to die. Like, she wants to, she, like, she was, like, the story could have been, like, she wishes the Babadook was real so he could claim her so she can be one with her husband. And, and also she wanted to get rid of her son because she blames him for her husband's death. It would have been, that would have been an interesting angle they would have taken the movie. Like, that's my one major complaint about it. Like, there's this other angle they could have went with. And, honestly, I would have, it, I would have been interested in that. But they kind of went with the safe route, in my opinion, of the, oh, the Babadook is an evil entity because you opened the book. Like, like it should, but it just felt like, like, one half into the movie, it was building up that the Babadook was made up. That she just made it up for herself as a way to basically just kill herself, pretty much, to join her husband in the afterlife, since she was this depressed and whatnot, how she probably rearranged, refixed the book and added in those new horror elements into it. Like, 
that would have been an intriguing plot twist. Like, I would have said, wow, I did not see that coming, but they didn't. They just went with, oh, the Babadook's real. And I have to say the ending kind of confused me. Like, the ending was more, like, bittersweet. Like, yeah, they got rid of the Babadook in a way, but now the Babadook is living with them inside the basement area. And they're kind of scarred for life. And, yeah, she's treating the Babadook like a guest, after everything that thing that, that thing done to her and her family. But let's see, and there was also the scene when they were talking to these community people, like saying uh, how the son broke the nose in three places of, of their family member. Like, I was thinking, like, you are taking this way too calmly. Can you go back to being mad about everything he just did? Like, I thought that was just way too calm. Like, she's just accepting that her son might be a lunatic. Like, I, I, I don't know how to pro respond to this. Like, like her son kind of acts up, but at times he doesn't. Like, he wants to protect her. Yes, I get that. Like, oh, that's sweet. But, like, the first 20 minutes of the movie, she, he was just so annoying. Like, I just wanted him to shut up and whatnot. But... But I'm not saying the movie was bad. It's a great horror film, a psychological one, dealing with grief and all that. I just feel like they could have had taken this plot twist angle they could have went with that certainly looked like it, but they didn't. They just went with the safe route in my viewpoint. But overall, it is a good movie. It's well acted. It's well directed. It's well everything. I could see why it has a 98% Rotten Tomatoes. And all, and and unfortunately has a three point five star on iTunes since people wanted to see the monster itself, not this psychological thing. And the atmosphere was very dark and gritty, and the house really did look depressing. The house just looked depressing, looked dead inside. Like everything looks like it's all fine and dandy outside, but in the inside, it's all all gloomy and dead. Like, yeah, yeah, this is the stages of grief that surely was shown in the movie. Huh, that was pretty interesting. Well, this was Neo Reality Entertainment. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate, and stay tuned for more.